There you go. Gustavo Neri with AB Boxing News here with the champ. The longest WBC champ in the game right now, Gary Russell Jr. What's going on, champ? How's everything? Man, everything good, man. I'm peaceful right now. You know, trying, like I say, trying to take care of the family, make sure the baby's good and situated. You know, just trying to stay safe. Hopefully everybody, we can get through this, this corona thing that's going on, man, and just stay safe. There you go. You know, like just overall, man, it's been it's been some crazy times. You know, a lot you know, a lot of the a lot of fans just want the sport of boxing to come back. I mean, I wanna start off by asking you, uh, what is one thing you learned about yourself during this uh, you know, self isolation or social distancing from the world? Oh man, it showed me that I was on the right path the whole time. You know, I'm I'm one of those type of like I say, I'm a, I'm pretty much like an independent contractor to a certain extent. In the, in the sport of boxing, you know, um, me and Al Hamer, we have a great business relationship, you know, but I'm not signed with, with Al Hamer or any major network or promoter or, or manager, et cetera, you know, um, and just my way of life is, anyway, I, I just prefer to not just be a, de a dependent, you know, I think a lot of people are dependent on society to do things for you, you know, they're dependent to, to try to, if you want to go get some food, you got to go to the grocery store. You know, it's a crazy little epidemic that's going on right now. You know, mm. a lot of these people was waiting on their next check to probably try to get some food in the house. Mm. You know, where are people going to get their food from, you know, and et cetera, you know. So, um, I mean, I just feel like I've, I've been on the right track as far as trying to guide and navigate my family. You know, I, I got my babies. They, they plant their own little garden. And stuff like that, you know. So, you know, I'm a hunter. I'm a hunter, so I don't mind going in the woods and putting some food on the table. You know, so I mean, just give me time to just actually sit down and spend time with my babies, my wife, you know, my children. You know, just invest time into them. I still get my workout on. You know, my wife she go jogging with me and etc. There you go. You know, so it's cool. There you go. I gotta, I gotta give you props, Gary, because even outside of boxing. You know, when you're not fighting, you know, I see videos of you on your Instagram. You're you're helping out your community. You know, you're engaging with the kids to do different activities with your brothers as well. You know, shout out to your family, too, because they're also with you, you know, outside of boxing with the activities. And, you know, so I got to give you props because not a lot of people do it nowadays, you know, helping out the community. And for you to better yourself and to better the community, I, I give you big props for that, champ. That's right. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I tell people all the time, you'll catch me at it. An amateur fight, but before you catch me at a professional fight. Yeah. You know what's funny too? Like, not funny, but uh, a lot of people were like, they sent me the video of what you would, the, the recent one you showed us, right? When you was calling out, you want to move up 35, the weight, I think it was like 143. And I was like, oh man, Gary, I'm like, that's crazy. Cause even that, like, I mean, as a fighter, right? You say to yourself, moving up two weight classes and then to jump up like right away against like, you know, people are saying like, you know, the baddest fighters at the 35, usually fighters would move up two weight, cl weight classes to, you know, get kind of like accustomed to the weight, you know, um, for you, it's like you're trying to, you're jumping in right with the top dogs, you know, for you, um, you know, I give you props for that. Yeah. You say hi to what? I'm saying I give you props for that for just jumping in right there. Like you, you want to mix it up with the best, you know, at 135. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I want to fight the best. You know, I feel like I'm one of the best things out here. I don't think no one can compete against me. You know, I had one one hiccup in my in my career because I was young. You know, I was young and I wasn't as smart as I am now. You know, uh, if I was as smart as I am now when I fought with Silly Lomachenko, I wouldn't have cut the weight. You know, I had to lose like five and a half pounds. Mm. But I, I, wouldn't have cut, I wouldn't have cut that weight the way I did in the sauna and all that other stuff, I wouldn't have cut that weight. I would have just let them find me. I would have beat that ass, and I just wouldn't have got the title. Mm. You know, like 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 Salido did. Yeah. You know, but I wasn't I wasn't educated enough. You know, at the time to to be able to think to do that. You know, but I mean, it is what it is. You know, we always got it from the mud. Yeah. And we always got it from the mud, but Sealy Lomachenko, he know he got a gift. He don't have the hand speed that I have. He don't have the possible way to know in general shape and IQ that I got. Mm. He got a little feet movement. But he, overall, he really can't fuck with me. He got a gift. 
before a dehydrated version, of the, the the lowest denominator version of Mr. Gary Russell Jr. Mm. You know, and, and it and it was a split decision fight, uh, and he he got it was a knockdown in the fight that wasn't even called. You know, so I mean that's neither here or there. Mm. But I plan on moving up to one thirty five. He's at one thirty five. I definitely would like that fight again. You know. Fully hydrated. I feel you. you know what I'm saying? I, 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 you know what I'm saying? Devin Haney at 135. I know he has a title. I mean, people who acting like they don't want to fight Devin Haney. Shit, I fight Devin Haney with Seth. Yeah, correct. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Tank, I've been saying I fight Tank. Now I'm up here. I moved to 35. What's up, Tank? Mm, I feel What's up? You. you know, so I mean, that's pretty much what it is. I'm a true fighter at the end of the day. I'm a man at the end of the day. I don't care if you're 130 pounds or 175 pounds. Get in my face and you want to fight. Put your hands up and be ready to fucking fight. Mm. Be ready to really fucking fight. Mm. I, I wanted to ask you in regards because you are currently a, the WBC champion, right? And I remember we was talking about how, you know, at the time, this was like, you know, maybe last year at the time you told me, you know, that your plans was to move up to 130 and because you was WBC champion at 126, that in a way you kind of could get an automatically sh uh, automatic shot at the time, right, for WBC at 130. Does that rule kind of still apply with the 135, even though you're jumping up two weight classes and just automatically jump in with champ? I'm not, I'm, to be honest with you, that's something that I probably need to educate myself on a little more. I'm not sure if it applies. I know that is something in the rule containing that if the fans, if the fans were to deem it as a, uh, a a relevant fight or some shit like that, then they'll probably be able to re-rule it or something like that. But I'm not, I'm not sure. Mm, okay, interesting. Yeah, because I I wanted to ask your reactions about yesterday. Like I don't know if you if you was watching a couple of videos. I know it was going on the internet, but. Uh, somebody was talking to Devin Haney in regards to like, you know, um, he's mentioned a comment. And I know for you, one thing we always talk about was always about respecting the culture and respecting like, you know, especially your culture, my culture. And I, I know that you always emphasize that, you know, to just, you know, respect everybody's values and whatnot. And I think people, I don't know how you take it, but people misconstrued or may, maybe took out of context of what Devin Haney said. And he mentioned how referring to Lomachenko about he'll never lose to a white boy. You know, what What do you say about that? You know, I know he's young and everything, but what do you think about that, Gary Russell? I mean, that's honestly what I think. You know, I think he's young. I think he's 21 years old, you know, um, and I don't think he understands the severity of the statement that he made or, or et cetera, you know. But um, I think that was just him trying to shoot a shot at me. I think that was him trying to shoot a shot at me, but I think he's young, you know. He he still got a lot more growing to do as a, as a man, you know, as an individual, you know. So people got to take that into consideration sometimes. You know, you're young and you're getting a little bit of money and you flashy and flamboyant sometimes. You just say stuff out the mouth that you shouldn't say, mm. you know. But I, I, think, I think he's just young. I think he's just young, you know. We all got some growing to do. But with all that being said, you know, we can make it happen. He ain't got to do all that extra rapping and shit. You know what I'm saying? We Let's wait till the, let's wait till the lights come back on. We can make something happen. Yeah. Just overall, because I think that um, a lot of boxing fans like to look at the future in boxing. And then, you know, we look at, you know, you mentioned Haney. You talked about, uh, you know, I know you mentioned about Ryan. You mentioned about Tank. And sometimes I think people, not to say they're not, um, you know, good fighters in their own rights. I think they're amazing fighters that they all have their own skills. But then I think people kind of mistaking that they haven't proved anything at, at the high level yet. So, you know, for you, you've been in great fights. You, you've proven yourself. You know, I, I, I'll i give you this right now and I'll tell you this right now. Um, Just Jojo Diaz himself, that was a great fight. And a lot of people don't, don't understand that he was a mandatory until this day. Because he fought you, he became a better fighter because he fought you. And a lot of people don't understand that, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean it's, a, it's a science to everything. I take my hat off to JoJo. You know, I, I always talk highly about JoJo. I like him. It's never per it's not personal. It's just business. Mm -hmm. You know, I like JoJo. I like the fact that he, he, he was a young man. You know what I'm saying? He was willing to put it all on the line. He knew what he was up against. Actually, he didn't know what he was up against, but he had a good understanding of what he was up against. 
he prepared himself to the best of his ability and he was willing to put it all on the line. Mm. I can't do nothing but respect that. And I knew that at some point he would become a world champion. He just wasn't going to be able to do it on that particular day competing against me. Mm-hmm. You know, and he, he did and he beat Kevin Farmer. You know, uh, he became a world champion. I mean, I figured that he would. He, he got the heart and he got the tenacity and he got the, he got the drive to do so. You know, he got enough skills to, to to be able to pull it out. You know, I felt that, you know, so I like JoJo. Yeah, congratulations to him, like like I said to him. But even, even though, even that same night when I seen him fight, he told me, he's like, for real, for real, he's like, this fight with Farmer, the fight that really helped me prepare for it was, uh, he's like, uh, Gary Russell. He's like, yo, Gary Russell. I bet you he had, I bet you he, he had to study for, he had to study our fight yeah. to watch for the seven Farmer. He and Kevin Farmer can't do Kevin Farmer can't do shit with me because yeah. the only reason why I was planning on going to to thirty was because Kevin Farmer said that if he beat JoJo, he wanted to fight. Mm. Yeah, which is which is off the table now. So it's it's really complicated. Yeah, JoJo beat that ass good. I was telling everybody, I'm like JoJo's gonna beat. Him. Yeah, and I was telling everybody, I'm like this. It was like man, man, Kevin Farmer can fight. I'm like, listen, JoJo can fight. I'm like, JoJo can fight. I can just, I can really fight. I just nullified the stuff that JoJo wanted to do. He couldn't get it all. Mm. Kevin isn't going to be able to do that. Mm. Kevin's not going to be able to do that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, JoJo, he going to learn. He he going to, he learn from that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? He definitely learned from that. You learn from competing against someone that's better than you. Yeah. That's just how it works. You know, he, he learned and he developed, and, you know, and I knew he was going to beat Kevin Farmer. I was, I, I was betting on JoJo to be from the beat Kevin. Yeah, so that was actually, that was a definitely great night. You know, I had a couple of people ask me, you know, they were like, Gustavo, you know, isn't it dangerous for, you know, Gary Russell to come to 135? And I, and it's kind of wrong for people to kind of, kind of make comparison, right? But they were like, you know, do you feel like Gary Russell could be like Mikey where he moved up from 35 to 47 and, you know, he looked kind of heavy and he wasn't as fast as we thought he was going to be and he maybe couldn't move his feet like we expected him to be. And they were like, do you think Russell could, um, will happen to him too? And I told people, you know, it all depends on a fighter's, you know, training and, and how the, um, the way their body is structured. You know what I mean? I can't say, you know, the way Mikey transformed his body going up might be the same for you. That's unfair, you know. Um, only you know how your body works. So... The only thing we could say as fight fans, and even for me, right, is, you know, we see you up there, and then to the to that day we get to analyze, you know, if if uh you're you know you have everything at one thirty five in terms of the speed, the footwork, because you are a very fast fighter, like you you have the fastest hand in boxing. So you know, what do you say to the fans that kind of question that? The the. I, I mean, everyone's entitled to their opinion. Mm. I mean, to the people that question that, everyone's entitled to their opinion. Mm. At the end of the day. You know, um, I prepare myself to the best of my ability. Mm-hmm. I was made to do this. Yeah. I was made to do this. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, I, I was made to do this. Man, I ain't really tripping off of people that have something to say about it. I think my skills there, even if you name any of the guys, any of the guys you talk about, even Mikey Garcia, you can put Mikey Garcia in the mix. You can ask any, you can line them up. And be realistic about it. Mm. Be, if you line them up stylistically and, and, and skill set wise, none of them can really fuck with me. Mm-hmm. The only the only upside that you would give them would be a physical attribute because they big or because they might get hit harder. But other than that, they don't possess everything else that I have. Mm. Gotcha. Yeah, that, that that is a great point because, you know, that, that rehydration, I know some fighters be going up 20 pounds and, and like, even 30 pounds at, at some points, you know? And for you, I know, um, I, I'm assuming you'll probably rehydrate, like, between 5 to 10 pounds after the night of the fight, um, you know? And like I said, man, I know sometimes, um, like I said, fighters are improving until they fight somebody like yourself. But even, like, for example, uh, Telfima Lopez, I think... He's he's I think he's he's proven himself in t- in terms of fighting a hard champion in Richard Comey. Now he's fighting Lomachenko. People are saying, um, should he be pound for pound if he beats Lomachenko? My question to you, champ, is should that should that be something that we should say after if he beats Lomachenko the night of the fight? 
I don't think Lomachenko should be pound for pound. No, I was talking about. Oh, no, sorry. I, I meant Tofima Lopez. Like, if he beats Lomachenko, the, should Lo, uh, Tofima Lopez? If I don't think, if I don't, if I don't think, if I don't think Lomachenko should be pound for pound, it doesn't matter if he oh. beat Lomachenko or not. He shouldn't be pound for pound either. Mm, okay. Lomachenko shouldn't be pound for pound. I don't think he's a pound for pound fighter. Gotcha, gotcha. You know, one one thing I was gonna say to you, like you mentioned about being independent, and you know. You're not signing out Heyman, but you, you've been working with him the last couple fights. And you was very fortunate enough to have a fight between February before this whole pandemic start. And knowing that most of these, uh, the champions at uh, 135 are different networks, that kind of gives you a, a, a better advantage, right? Because you could go one network, fight for a title, and then go to another network, fight for another title. Is that correct? That's correct. Mm, okay. That's correct. You know, and at the end of the day, you know, I'm I'm still I'm still a title holder. I still got the title at 126. Mm-hmm. She just competed against my mandatory challenge. Mm, yeah, that that is. Crazy. I don't have no, I don't have no mandatory challenges. I just competed against my mandatory challenge. If I I don't have to fight again until I until another mandatory round. Mm. And, and even you know, so if I want to move up to 135 and fight, the only way that only thing that could possibly stop it. Is if one of these other guys had pride engagements with someone else, mm. and then even then, and even then, because even then, if the fans were to say, you know, hell yeah, we want this fight, you know, or what do you think? Or would they do a poll on it and they say, well, more people will probably want to see this fight than now, then it can happen that way. But mm. you know, I had a I had a great talk with the WBC president on Instagram a couple of days ago, and we was kind of revisiting the whole WBC franchise champion and from what I got was more like, you know, under special circumstances, we allow fighters to move up and down to fight the best fights for the fans. And just hearing from you, you know, you're talking about going up to 35. So, I mean, I don't know if you could make a a, a ruling or I don't know how that works, but is there a way that you could send a letter to the WBC explaining, I guess, your plans? Like, let's say you go to 35 and then if you see an undisputed title 130, maybe you could go to 130. Like, is that something you would plan, like, likely doing, um, champ? I don't want to fight nobody at 130. No, but I mean, in regards to just like the, like, you know, the way they were defining WBC champ that you you get to fluctuate, you know, like, let's say 26, 30, 35. Not to say that you, don't, you at the moment, I know you don't want to go to 130, but I'm saying that if it makes sense, like, let's say, Two years from now, and because you're the WBC franchise champion, let's say they they lab- label you as WBC franchise champion, would that be something that makes sense though? Because of the, the oh, yeah, 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 I'm doing that. Mm, okay, okay, interesting. You know, I wouldn't mind doing that. Okay. I wouldn't mind doing that at all. I mean, I'm the WBC champion at 120, the featherweight, the longest reign of featherweight WBC yeah. champion that there is. Why is it that I'm not a franchise champion? Did mm-hmm. that that is. That is I had my title. I had my title longer than Lomachenko had whatever title that he got mm-hmm. at thirty five. Yeah. How does they make him a franchise champion? Mm-hmm. That that is true. It's un- like I said, it's very unfortunate. And like I said, I, I'm not the WBC, but I'm hopefully, you know, if they're willing to work something out with you to make you WBC uh, franchise champion, that would be wonderful. Not just just for boxing, also for like the culture, you know. Right. Mm. That'd be so sweet. That'd be dope. I would love to do that. Yeah, we gotta we gotta talk to WBC for that champ for real for real. Um, I also wanted to ask you, you know, just quick uh words of encouragement or maybe advice to uh one Deontay Wilder. I don't know if you saw the fight, but I know that any fighter that gets in the ring, of course nobody wants to lose. It's a competitive sport, but I know that sometimes a loss could, you know, make a fighter or break a fighter. Um, for you, what what advice would you give for Deontay Wilder going through these hard times of, you know, going through this his feet and you know just isolate himself from the world. Man, Beyonce, that was my good friend. Mm-hmm. You know, we was on the Olympic team together. Um, we got a little more camaraderie than some of the other guys because our rooms were directly across the hall from each other. So we had a little more contact with one another. You know, um, Beyonce, cool dude, man. But my advice to him, and he already know, we had a good friendship. Um, my advice to him is, man, lace your motherfucking boots up. Strap your boots up a little tight to keep your head up and keep grinding. Mm. Let him get it. Yeah. Strap your boots up a little, little, little tighter 
You know what I'm saying? Keep your head up and that's good. You got motherfuckers depending on you. You don't got time for all this extra, you know what I'm saying, sobbing and all that. Nigga, dust, dust yourself off. Dust yourself off and let's get it. Let's push. That that yeah that those were really strong words because it it's a it's a lot going on with him like I said like I mean like I said he took a loss and you know he should bounce back you know he he should um learn from the 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 rematch and go from there and then like you know just lastly what are what are some some of the fights as a fight fan are you looking interested in seeing after all this is back to normal champ. I'm not sure. I am interested in uh, Tilefimo and and Domachenko fight. Mm. I'm definitely interested in seeing that fight. Okay. I don't even care. I don't care who won. I won Domachenko anyway. Mm. He oh. can lose. It doesn't really matter. I won Domachenko. You just want to avenge that defeat, huh? Man, but I, I need to do it for myself. Yeah, I feel you there. Man. I feel like it was a fluke. You gotta do it again to prove it to me. Prove it to me. Make a, make me a believer. I could I don't believe that shit. Come come get it. Mm. <laughs> no, I tell you, champ. It's like it's like what Deontay Wilder said. He said, uh, you know, speak it, believe it, you shall receive it, and that's how you are too, man. You speak in it, you believe in it, you receive it, man. So that fight happened, that's a super fight too between you and Lomachenko, man. For sure, yeah. bro. You know what I'm saying yeah. yeah. I feel you, bro. It's a super fight. Mm-hmm. That definitely would. You know, you know what's funny too. I, I I always love to do like fantasy fights, and I I wish back in the day like if Mikey was still at one thirty five, like you and him, like go at it, bro. That would have been dope, bro. Man, hey, I wanted to fight Mikey too. Mm. Hey, I always wanted to fight Mikey. He slept without a beat him. I would have beat Mikey. Yeah, that would have been a great fight. You would have had all the fans coming in. It didn't matter where the fight was gonna be in Maryland, L.A., New York. Like that was gonna it was gonna sell out. Heck, heck of a fight. Yeah, nah, I, I like I like I like his peoples too, man. I like his brother. Mm. My brother I feel he's cool. I know I know him from the Amateurs. I know him from the Amateurs. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That was always that was always cool. It was always cool. It was always chill. Yeah. Especially Robert. He left for Robert. He was he was chill. Dude, he was funny. He was always chill. But nah, that would have been a hell of a fight. How much Mike how much Mike is weighing now? I mean, his last fight he fought uh, Jesse Vargas. He fought at forty seven. He didn't he didn't rehydrate that much. I think like one fifty two, but um, he's staying at forty seven. That's according to him. Yeah, yeah, because at one forty, you know, he has a stable mate that's a unified champion in Jose Ramirez. So they're gonna look to line him up against Josh Taylor for the undisputed. And then you know, I think it'll, it'll be a conflict of interest for Robert since he trains Mikey. Right. And Jose Ramirez, it, it just wouldn't make sense unless you know Jose Ramirez leaves the camp and goes somewhere else. But I don't think you know that doesn't benefit Robert, you know. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, like that. Yeah, nah, nah. nah that would have been nice. Mm -hmm. That would have been nice. That would have been a good fight. Mikey got good pop. Yeah. Mike got good pop. You know what I'm saying? He's strong. I think he's just too flat footed. Mm. Yeah, I think he began to flat footed for me. I feel you, champ. I feel you. I was gonna 